Good morning, everybody. Time for a quiz. Some of you have taken this quiz before, right? But there's no writing. I just want talking. Preferably, turn to somebody you don't know. Okay? Introduce yourself and talk about the following things while simultaneously keeping the balloon in the air. It's not allowed to touch the ground. If it touches the ground, you get an F. Go!
talking to each other? Teamwork. Teamwork? Yeah. This is physics, yeah. right? You have come through physics 4A, okay? Some of you have come through physics 4B. Nice, right? So you know, right? You know how this works, you know what you need to do to make it work, all that kind of stuff, right? But those of you that have had me before, you know that I'm big on having you teach each other. And when I say you're gonna be talking to each other, do you believe me? Yeah, those of you who have me, know that I make you talk to each other during lecture, right? Those of you who haven't had me, your first experience in here was not talking to me, it was talking to somebody else, wasn't it? Right? So I hope you believe me when I say we're gonna be talking a lot to each other. So let's get, um, let's get two things straight out of the way here. Um, how many of you have had Mr. Bailo as a teacher? Okay, how many of you have not had Mr. Bailo as a teacher? Okay, keep your hands up, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Help these people! Right? These are the people that need friends. They need translators. Mr. Balo speaks, so, right? Okay. So those of you, you can put your hands down now, thank you. Those of you that have self-identified not having any hands before, right? Okay. I make a terrible, terrible assumption, which is everybody's had me. <laughs> and you're familiar with my jokes and how my class works and all that kind of stuff. And so if you're sitting there going, I don't understand what's going on, I don't be, I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing, I don't understand. That's not you. It's me making an assumption that everybody knows what's going on, right? If you've had me before and you don't understand what's going on, then be quiet. No, no, no. Put your hand in the air, right? I've made an assumption that's incorrect. So I can't, no matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, again, I make that basic assumption, oh, it's physics 4B or 4C. People know what's going on. They've had 4A, they've had me, let's say, right? So some of you are coming out of Mr. Ragsdale, Mr. Trelawney's classes, others are coming from Clovis, or a bunch of different stories out there, right? Uh, but the majority of these students have had me. So use them as a resource, right? If you haven't had me before, like what the heck, did he really mean that? And tell the truth. Don't be mean, right? Okay, tell the truth. Um, and if you've taken physics 4B, please, don't scare the physics 4C students that have to take 4B still, right? It's bad enough. I'm not asking you to lie. But when they say it's 4B, how's 4B? Try to keep that shocked white face to a minimum. <laughs> tell them it'll be okay, that they can do it, right? And then tell them how bad it is. Um, those of you, okay, so raise of hand. How many of you have had 4A and 4B? This is your first semester. Okay, so that's like more than half of you, right? Okay, so raise your hand if you've had 4A only and you're in 4C now, and it feels like you're taking it out of order. Okay, 4B students, these are the ones that need help. Not because of 4C, but because they haven't had 4B. In the sense of they don't know really how bad it can be. The 4B students know 4B is the hardest, by far, okay? In order from hardest to easiest, 4B, 4A, 4C. 4C is like a five out of 10, maybe a five and a half out of 10 in terms of difficulty, okay? You're not gonna relax, you still need to do the work, it takes a lot of work, but it's just, it's not the level of 4B and 4A. Those that are straight from 4A to 4C, you are not at a disadvantage in the sense of you're missing topics or any of that kind of stuff. Every once in a while, there's gonna be this little thing where I'm gonna mention, hey, in 4B, you remember the electric field, wink, wink, right? And you might be sitting there going, I don't know what's going on, and the rest of them are having some sort of post-traumatic stress disorder, okay? And then we'll move on. I'm connecting things for the 4B students, right? Okay. And I'll do the same thing in 4B for you 4 Cers, right? I'll connect the dot right back. And some of the students that in last semester that were in 4B that have already had 4C, they go, like, oh, oh, I get it. So it all comes around, right? And you're not at a disadvantage if you're coming straight from 4B. Matter of fact, I think you have the advantage, really. Because the 4B students, they've forgotten all the mechanics. <laughs> okay, it's like wiped from their brains because of 4B. So you're gonna be helping them here at the first. 
Okay, we start talking about like mass and force and springs. You four A students are gonna be like, I know this, right? And the four B students are gonna be like, what's a spring? So, yeah, it gets bad. Oh, second thing I have to mention, right? Um, you remember my, uh, my, my picture that I wear, right? Well, my colleague. <laughs> <laughs> Right? I got this this morning. Isn't this fantastic? Right? They don't wear this during exams. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the black and white one. I'll have this one. So. Did you, did you put that merch out? Put the merch out? <laughs> <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> you know how bad it would be if everybody was wearing this shirt? <laughs> <laughs> But oh gosh, yeah, I just I thought that was the best, the best thing ever. Okay, um, let's cut straight to the important <coughs> part. What are the best places to eat in Fresno? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What is it? Maze. M A Z E. M A Y D. M A Y D. What kind of food is that? Mediterranean. Like Ooh. it's like the sister um, restaurant to Butterfish. Okay, where is it? Right next to the Walmart, it's like oh, Herndon and Palm. Herndon, Herndon and Palm? Yeah. Okay. Herndon. It's like right next to the Dutch Bros. Okay. Right. Very good place. Mm. Okay, where else? Brooks Burgers. Brooks Burgers. Where's that? Uh, it's in River Park. Remember where the World of Sports Cafe is? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's in that it's same that place. Okay. Kintosh? Yeah. K K I N. Uh, G I N. G I N. Z A Z A. I know that. Is that uh, is that here? Yeah, it's just okay. Western. Yeah. Why am I doing this? Date night. Date night. Mm -hmm. right? I need ideas. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. What? Four seasons? Yes. We've been there. It's okay. I grew up here in the Bay Area, which I like. Oh yeah, it's it's good. Yeah, it's 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 good in town. It's good. It's good in town, but not like this. I was about to say it's good for Fresno. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, we do go to Imperial Garden more often though. Oh yeah. Uh, it's because quick easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how many of you have done ninety nine craft pizza? No. Best pizza in Fresno. Right? My wife and I don't like Fresno pizza. We just don't. Okay? We're snobs. We grew up in places that had fantastic pizza. Fresno County. Okay? 99 craft pizza is good pizza. It's not the best pizza. It's not great pizza. It's the best in Fresno. Okay? Order their Detroit style pizza. That's what they kind of specialize in. The regular pizzas are okay. The Detroit style is fantastic. If you don't know what a Detroit style pizza is, it's like focaccia bread, that's it, okay? It's a little bit like focaccia bread, but it's like almost deep, it's crust is almost deep fried in the pan that it's cooked in. So it's got this crispy bottom and sides, and then it's got this fluffy dough. It's like bread, it's not like a pizza crust, it's like bread. And then on top of that, you get your sauces, your pepperoni and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so the Detroit style, 99 craft pizza, it's uh, again, Palm and Herndon area, I think. Uh, uh, no, it's Palm and Meads area. Um, best pizza we've had in Fresno. I've only been here for 22 years. If you're willing to make the drive, there's a place in Kingsburg called Casaro's. A little out there, that's good pizza. Is it? Oh, yeah. Okay, do you think me and Ed's is good pizza? No. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't like their sauce. K A S. It's like uh, it's, it's C A R. Uh, or no, C A S A R O. It's uh, C O S. C O S. Oh, it's C O S. The other thing you gotta get is you gotta get their garlic twists. Okay. They're huge, <laughs> but they're so good. Okay, Casados and King. All right. Uh, Kingsburg, not Kingman. Kingman's in Arizona. Okay, uh, let's play the game. Uh, which major? So, engineering major, civil? 
okay? Not a lot of you, because most civil don't have to pay for fee unless you're transferring somewhere else besides Fresno State, okay? Um, let's see, Kevin, uh, uh, Kevin plays the game. No, mechanical? Yeah. Okay, electrical? Uh, who am I forgetting? Computer engineering? Or computer science, computer engineering? Yeah, lots of things, okay. What engineering did I forget? Aerospace. Aerospace. Architectural, biomedical, yeah, biomedical engineering, okay. Um, okay, chemistry majors, yeah. Good job, Kevin, you're the lone chemistry major out there. Uh, what other majors have I forgotten? Math majors better not be here, some of you still here? Because <laughs> okay, math majors only have to take four, right? Um, what am I missing, what are the majors I'm missing? What? Bio, okay, straight bio or bio related field. English? Philosophy? Physics? Physics. Physics majors? Okay, self identify. <laughs> Thank you. Represent. <laughs> what are your future professional plans? How many of you want to go to graduate school? Okay. How many of you are going to graduate school? Not want to, but <laughs> need to, okay? So the rest of you going out to work, right? Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the hope, right? So what do you, like, you want to do with your career? Like, what, what do you want to build? What do you want to make? What do you want to do? Money. Money? <laughs> Semiconductor manufacturing. Semiconductor manufacturing. That's crazy. And sweet, sweet government retirement. Oh, government jobs. The rosy, the rosy coach. Right, so like um, government job in city of Fresno. Okay, so it's the local government. Yep. Yeah. I could work in the water department for Fresno or any other city, just in a California yeah. water. Yeah, California water, big deal. Stuff going on there. The rest of you are just money. <laughs> so I'm stuck between either stuff that blows up or making uh, criminals cry. It's a hard choice. <laughs> yeah, why not both? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's good. All right. Um, what were things that you liked about either physics or or, or, being, or maybe a different class that we saw going to school and you think I should try? It gets to calculate the surface. <laughs> that was four D and it's in space. Okay. I like that our bad budget got drained and our budget has been refilled with <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot less of that now, okay? Uh, there's still some things that I will correct, but it's not nearly as brutal as it is in 4A, where I'm, I mean, will you be failing a lot in here before you start making success? Yes, but it's not, less as, it's not as much as 4A, okay? Because by now you've got some skills under your belt, and by that I don't want to terrify you by, oh, I don't remember anything that happened last semester, Mr. Bay. I know, I know. But you know how to study. You, you've got some sort of way of getting through this stuff, right? My caution for you, again, 4C is easier than 4A or 4B. And so at first you might be going into this going, wow, okay, I can do this. I don't need to spend as much time on it. And you'll, you'll take some of the gas off, or you'll coast a little bit, or you'll start skipping days, or you'll be pushing it off until two days before the homework is done. Because, because is it possible to do that? Yes. But you are really going to kind of mess yourself up if you do that. So, so find your groove, right? Use those skills that helped you to get through 4A or 4B, and realize that, yeah, it's going to feel like you're understanding this stuff better. There's lots of reason for that, but the chief among them is that physics 4C is like all application. We're gonna teach you one toolbox for the first unit, and after that, it's all application. And you're just gonna be like, oh, oh, making these links, and it's like real in front of you. And then we get to quantum mechanics, and it all goes back. We'll get there. Well, I, I love just finding out like all this random thing that I use every day. Like, oh, that's how it works. Yeah, yeah we do discover how the universe works, and it's fun. Did he say there's only one toolbox? That one new tool, well, okay, that's a lie too. 
Um, there's one, two months <coughs> left for you to learn, which is simple harmonic motion, that completes the mechanics toolbox, the, uh, the full toolbox of everything that we look at the universe with. Okay? If you consider relativity to be a new toolbox, fine, I don't. It's another way of doing things. Okay? I also really don't think of quantum mechanics as a new toolbox because it borrows from all the other toolboxes so much. Again, it's just a different way of looking at things. So, so you could say that relativity and quantum mechanics are toolboxes. But really, four A toolboxes of kinematics, uh, Newton's laws, energy, and momentum, along with simple harmonic motion that we're learning in physics 4C, that really is the core set of toolboxes. Everything else is gravy. And that just means your physical copy didn't have the extended version. Uh, we'll figure that out. Bookstore? And then the bookstore ordered in the wrong copy. Your online access should still keep you, should get you the ebook version of that stuff. But we skip half of those chapters anyway, so it's not that big of a loss. Okay. All right, yeah. For the 4A and 4 d students, are we getting the, the 4C plus C book too? Oh, I need to ask about that. I think the answer might be no now, but I'll ask. I'll ask. Thank you for reminding me. Will you send me an email? Remind me. Um, what do you know? What, what do you want to know about me? I know a lot of stuff about you. What do you want to know about me? This is, of course, one of the ways that I see myself. I include this picture because it simply lowers stress hormones in anybody that looks at it. Right? Okay. Uh, the four B students look at me like that. <laughs> right? And this, of course, is exactly who I am. Favorite doctor? Tennant. Uh, long shot. Favorite story is the Matt Smith, Amy Rory story arc. But David Tennant is my favorite doctor because he's fat. Okay, so I had surgery. Some of you know I had surgery for my uh, for my nose. Did you like my nose job? <laughs> it was all on the inside. They had to break my nose from the inside out because uh, I had a, I have a de from birth I had a deviated septum, and uh, and so they broke my nose from the inside out. And as uh, part of that recovery, you're not allowed to basically do anything. Um, they I had um, uh, splints in my nose. That's as uncomfortable as it sounds, okay? And for basically 10 days, I had to have those splints in, and I couldn't like do any heavy lifting, strenuous, anything. So I sat and played video games <laughs> for 10 days. Um, I played Path of Exile mostly um, as a filler in between. I'm way, you know, so Monster Hunter is kind of done. I'm done with Monster Hunter Rise. Yeah, no. Right, and now we're going to be moving into the new Monster Hunter game. Who knows when that's going to come? Kerbal's Space Program 2 is coming on November 24th. I can't wait. Free on the Epic Game Store right now. Mm -hmm. Purple Space Worm is free on the Epic Game Store right now. It is. Okay. Um, and yeah, but mostly Path of Exile because it was. Path of Exile is a real crunchy game. Like, there's a lot of complexity to that, and I like the game. And Dwarf Fortress. For what? Path of Exile? It's a new thing for me. Yeah, I just, I just played a new game. Oh, what? Build? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, Explosive Arrow is how I do start. And I started Death Occultist right now, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Good day, we can talk about this now. Okay. <laughs> Anything else you want to know about me? <laughs> That's a really unfair question. Um, can we narrow it down by country? Like Italian? Or Asian, or can we narrow it down by sauce? Tomato base, cream base? So your top three. Okay, top three would be uh, pasta chichis. I don't know if anybody knows what pasta chichi is. You make a marinara sauce of your choosing, hopefully kind of fresh and a little bit sour with some other stuff in it. And then you put garbanzo beans in it with a lot of garlic, and you throw that on top of pasta. 
Uh, I do like marinara with um, just straight up sausage, like Sam's Deli medium sausage in it. Whoa. Uh. And then I'm a real fan of like a um, cazzo di pepero, which is like a cheese and pepper just on top of noodles, right? With the pasta water emulsifying the cheese. It's a really simple peasant dish, but um, <laughs> those are my kind. Of, my mother's maiden name is Carranza, though, and so now you can see a lot of my refrigerator. <laughs> um, and uh, you don't get more Italian than that. Like, like it's just, uh, yeah, we have a long Italian history. Assuming I've seen a movie recently, <laughs> and that it was good. <laughs> <laughs> now, does that have to be a new movie? Oh, okay, then Lord of the Rings. <laughs> We've been watching, my daughter's never seen Lord of the Rings. I know, I'm sorry. She's a senior in high school, and we have not shown her more. I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I have no excuse for that. It's I terrible oversight as a parent. I haven't seen Lord of the Rings since last Get out! No, it was, oh, since last it was amazing. <laughs> oh, okay, I, know, I was like, my friends were like, you've never seen yeah, I mean, I, I, so the Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings, extended edition 4K. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've been watching that. We're, we're, three, we're two and a half movies in, right? Um, so yeah, I, I, I watch that every year. Yes, twice. Love it. It was really good. Rings of Power, definitely watch it. Steal your parents' Amazon Prime account. Go watch it. Um, ritualistic events of painting the roll. Um, this side is not for me. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow's the day that we do all of the, the like abs, drops, all that kind of stuff. Okay, and if you're on a wait list, there's a really good chance I am not going to be able to get you in. Uh, we are limited by the seats in this room. It's 27 people per section. Um, so it's going to be rough, right? Uh, Mr. Ragsdale still has room. Uh, where were we? Here we here. No, that was not where we were. That was what we were going to be doing eventually. I think I've shown this picture before to you guys. Well, that is still very much true. Um, COVID is, uh, most Americans have started forgetting that COVID exists or something like that, right? Or ignoring it, whatever. Um, we've got RSV, we've got the flu, keeping our doctors and nurses busy, our hospital beds, we're at 110% or something like that, we're sleeping in the hallways. Here in Fresno, we've, uh, was it Madera Medical Center had to close or something like that? Um, so so our, our poor doctors and nurses and the people in related health field, they're really getting hammered. So anything we can do to keep ourselves out of that situation is helping them. Um, I do wear a mask quite often, right? Because uh, in my family, we have health conditions that if we got really sick, would be really bad. So you'll always see me, I'll take it off for lectures so that you can see my new notes up. But um, if you come up to me, like in lecture or in lab, I usually just wearing it all the time, you'll see me throw the mask back on. It's not you. Right? It's just me trying to keep my family safe. So uh, please don't take offense at it. Uh, my class is, has always been a place where you can wear your mask or not wear your mask as you please, right? Everybody should feel comfortable with their choices there. Um, physics is bad enough. We don't need to overlay a bunch of other garbage on top of it. So please express yourself whatever way you feel is appropriate with that. I do encourage you to wear masks because you guys are sardines out there, right? Okay, right next to each other. It's winter time. The cold, the flu, right, just rushes through, and it can kind of wipe out whole sections of the class if we're not careful. So, um, if you get sick and you test positive for COVID, you gotta let me know so that we can. You do a form, uh, online form, and then the nurses contact you and they clear you for coming back. And if I get that form, if I, the nurses will notify me, and then I can. That's the way that I'm gonna give you links to the class recordings and that kind of stuff, right? So, so if the campus tells you you can't come because you have COVID, I'm gonna have your back, right? But you need to go through that process to get the clearance. Um, 
if you get a cold and it's not COVID, right, you're just sort of symptomatic and coughing, runny nose, throw a mask on, right? Protect us, right? Try not to spread that thing uh, when you come here uh, and get close to each other. You know, outside you do what you want, but um, uh, please don't be offended if I, if you're sitting there snuffling a lot, right? You got a runny nose or something, and I just grab a mask and I hand it to you, right? I'm just trying to keep us from, um, you know, getting too sick and it sucks to be sick. All right. Questions, comments, or concerns about that? And you're always, you can refuse to put the mask on. That's fine. All right. Um, I'm going to kick you out. OK, syllabus. Um, again, a lot of this stuff is going to be old news for those of you that are taking the test. Because 4C is structured almost exactly the way that 4A and 4B are, right? Four exams, homework, you know the drill. Organic chemistry student, I'm sure of it. <laughs> um, so book, uh, uh, so some of you, if you bought a year's worth of access, right, a, in 4A, you should be good to go. You just, log, you just go to Canvas, you go in, and it doesn't even bother you. It's like you, you're kidding. If you bought a six-month access, you could lose access like the third weekend of the semester, right? Okay. So you kind of have to figure out how to check your account. There's a way to do it. I can't remember how to do it. Um, if you bought a year's access and this is your third semester, thank you for reminding me. And you can send me an email. Remind me, right? Yes. I can beg the the author of the book to give us free codes for that third semester. They did say that they would do that for a while. I don't know when they're going to shut that off. So I'll I'll ask. The worst they can say is no, right? Um, how many of you are like bought that year ago in 4A and you're running out right now? If I can give them so many 10, okay. So we'll see what I can do there. You might have to buy one more six month access, but we'll, we will find out. Um, everything's on Canvas, right? Yeah. Homework book. Um, okay. How important is this? For those of you that went, it's like a lifesaver, right? For those of you that didn't, you're totally missing out, OK? Honestly, can you do physics 4C without grasp? Probably. But it really helps. Unlike 4A, where for most of the people that went, it was a lifesaver, 4C is just a kind of a quick way to get your homework done, OK? Until we get to relativity and quantum mechanics, and then you'll be there. <laughs> Okay, but again, if you can give, if you can plan that time to be there on Friday, consistently, it's just gonna, it's, it makes your life so much better. Oh, the tutors are gonna be tutoring on Sunday. I heard. Yeah. Yeah. So first time ever Sunday tutoring. Um, do you have to be here? Do I require you to be here? <laughs> yeah, just tomorrow. <laughs> if you're not here, you'll get in class. <laughs> the answer is no, right? Like, I don't, there's no grade tied exactly to your attendance. I'll get, do you need to be here? Yeah. Yes! It is physics still. And even though it's the easiest physics class we have, it's still physics, right? It's still hard. It still takes time and all that kind of stuff, right? After the third week, I'll stop taking the official role. I have to make sure by the third week, we, all the people that are enrolled are enrolled and not, not all kinds of stuff. Uh, for, for the state laws, but after that, it's like, you're in, you're in college, you can do what you want, okay? I'll worry about you if you don't show up. And I might try to chase it down, but, um, yeah. Uh, let's see here. I don't think there's anything different here. No. From what you've experienced before. Again, if you haven't had me before, sorry. <laughs> There's four exams. Um, what do I mean by comprehensive? Physics builds on itself, right? We can't, I mean, even in 4C, like we're gonna use the simple harmonic. Okay, I was about to lie. Thermodynamics doesn't build on anything and should die in a fire, okay? <laughs> but other than thermodynamics, everything builds on itself. We are gonna do simple harmonic motion, then we're gonna do thermodynamics, then we're gonna do optics, and then we're gonna do relativity, and then we're gonna do quantum mechanics, and then we're gonna do nuclear physics, okay? So that's sort of our progression, it all builds. Okay, including 4A, yes, we will be talking about forces and all those things. Deep breath, it's okay, I'll remind you, okay? But 
It builds on itself. So that's why it's comprehensive. But on, um, on exam three, am I going to go back and include an exam one question? No, I don't do that, right? Okay, the exam focuses on that material. But you're going to need the material from before, except for thermodynamics. You don't ever need that ever again because it's dumb. What? Have I ever thrown a final? Yeah, like a comprehensive. Like, <laughs> have I ever given a comprehensive final? Yeah, I used to give comprehensive finals. How did that go? It went fine. The problem is, is that I always, it always felt redundant. A lot of students would either not take it because they could get the grade that they wanted without taking it, um, which maybe his bed is bad course design. But more often than not. The students, it, it was extra stress to the students when they didn't need it. Because there wasn't any new skill being applied there. There wasn't me finding out anything new about what you can and can't do. Um, and often it was like, take the fourth unit and then within three days take a final exam. So I, I just, I didn't understand why that was the way it was and so I changed it. You're right, but I will not twist the arms of the other teachers. They have the right to do what they want in their classes. I will preach the word, but they have to accept. Um, and I put this slide in to remind me to, to tell you the Kerbal Space Program is free on the Epic Games Store. Go get it. It's one of the best. It is so, you know what? Go get it. Don't install it until May. You need to focus on your schooling, okay? I mentioned this in 4A. Um, I told you guys to wait till this winter sale or something like that. Well, just this, and this is through Wednesday, like Thursday morning they'll switch to a new free game. Uh, but Kerbal Space Program is free, and Kerbal Space Program 2 is coming out on February 24th. I will have a full review for you on Monday the 27th. <laughs> I was asked to do Women in Engineering Day, which is February 24th. <laughs> it was close, Women in Engineering Day won, but only because Dr. Orphy did puppy dog eyes at me. <laughs> no, I, I was happy to help with Women in Engineering Day, but I, when I found out they were the same day, I was like, oh, d -d -d. maybe I can bring my Steam Deck to Women in Engineering Day. <laughs> All right. Um, this isn't any different either. So the, when I said it's the same as 4A or 4B, it's the same. Right? The mechanics of the class are the same. The scales are the same, all that kind of stuff. What's the scary number? 70. 70. What's the important number? 15. The 15, the homework. Okay, a lot of you know this. Okay. Um, out of curiosity, just so the people that haven't had me before, what was like your average amount of hours spent on homework, say, in a week? About 12 to 14. 12 to 14? Around there, a little shorter, a little longer. I've had students spend 40. I've had students spend six. Right? It's just there's this wide range, but the 12 to 14 number is pretty average. 4B? He didn't do anything else. He would eat, sleep, 4B. What do you mean go to the bathroom? What do you mean go to the bathroom? Yeah. Okay, it, 4B is terrible, right? But um, yeah, so 4C, my guess is that you're going to be spending a little less than the 12 to 4B, maybe the 10 to 12, even a little less than 10. I tell you these things because I want to be honest and I want to convey that yes, it is easier. I should probably say no, it's the hardest thing you've ever expected, right? But then you won't believe me when it, when it matters. So I'm telling you the truth. But I also am warning you against letting off the gas. Don't coast. Because 4C, can, you can coast a little bit, and all of a sudden it can come back and whack you. And something that I'm like, wow, optics, it's so easy. You're going, oh, Mr. Bill, it's the hardest thing ever. Right? Because you're coast, you coast it too much. Yeah, so, so if you take like math 5B or math 6, whichever one was the hardest, that's about how students score the week. Oh, I disagree, but OK. <laughs> I died in so five, four, five B, I like slept through. It was boring. It was like the only thing. Show me how to do an integral once, and then I'll just turn the crank for a hundred problems. Thank you. That was my that was my math five B class. Uh, math six was 
The number of chili peppers? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, the difficulty? Um, let's say you had 4B, right? OK. So we're going to have a taste of 4B in relativity and quantum mechanics. That lasts for about three weeks. So like the intensity of 4B maybe for three weeks. OK. The rest of it is easier than 4A. I say easier. Still physics. Um, what should you never ever do with an exam? Miss it. <laughs> Cheat. Thank you. you shouldn't miss it, right? But if you know that you need to miss it, and again, I'll show you all the data, or you can go on the Canvas right now. It's kind of like the calendar I had last semester, right? Go on the Canvas, see what the dates are. You know those dates. If you know you're getting married, you know you're having a baby, you know you're whatever, okay? Ahead of time, let me know. Okay, 14, you've got something that day, whatever, okay? Let me know, make arrangements, try and do that, right? Okay, try to be reasonable. But really, don't miss it, okay? If you need to miss for whatever reason, just try to, try to figure that out. Um, and uh, same, same things, right? You allowed to use technology in here? Yeah, yeah I encourage it, right? You allowed to be watching YouTube uh, while trying to learn physics? As long as it's about physics, right, okay? But if what you're doing in here is distracting somebody else, playing a video game, watching a TikTok, whatever kind of thing, right? And the person behind you is distracted, then the person behind you has the right to tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, could you please turn that off or do that outside, right? Okay. Bring the technology here, use it for learning physics, all that kind of stuff. Totally encourage that. Um, and then I grip it as a stab in your cold dead hand whenever you can, right? Because now you've always used technology. It's horrible. I train you up to use technology and then. I just don't have the ability here, or the means, or the infrastructure to do it the way it should be done. Uh, and, and try not to bother me in between class, right? Coming out of 4A, got to reset my brain for 4C, got to set up a bunch of stuff. Um, and, uh, and what happens if you come up to me and ask me a question and I don't have time for you? Go away. Yeah, I punch you, right? No. I might tell you to just go away, right? Or don't ask me that question. Please, please don't be offended, right? If I tell you, hey, would you just email me that question? I'm just trying to, to, to get things set up and ready to go, right? Um, you might see me joking, talking about a movie, video game, or something like that. And you might think, oh, well, he has time now. No, that's me resetting my brain, right? I often will talk about a topic while I'm setting something up so that my brain's not concentrating on physics so that I can get right back into it when the time comes. So uh, lot, everything that I do is intentional in this room, right? So um, just be aware of that and try not to bother me with like homework, anything that requires more than two words to answer, right? I'm not going to answer. Uh, all right. <laughs> this seems like a long list, doesn't it? <laughs> Scary list? <laughs> all but one of those topics is amazing. It really is. Okay? Simple harmonic motion, waves, and sound. That's our first unit. It all goes together. We're going to learn how things wiggle. Okay. Uh, and then we are going to do our time in thermodynamics. We are going to move through it at light speed. I am going to go so fast, your hair is going to be on fire. It is steam. Like three chapters in two weeks, and I cut out like most of it, because most of it is dumb, okay? There are some physics teachers who disagree with me, they really color, um, and they will take like six to eight weeks in thermodynamics. I'm glad that we have freedoms in this country that allow people to express themselves in subject matter. I disagree, I think thermodynamics should be given to the chemists, they love it, play with it, have fun. It is such a, it is dead to me. I can't stand thermodynamics. And I will go through it as fast as humanly possible. Well, that's not true. As fast as humanly possible, I teach you everything you need to know in five minutes. Right? But it won't help you in your career. So I'll give you enough to help you in your careers, and then we will ignore things like uh, equipotation of energy in a gas. Why? Why? Anyway. So. Uh, oh, and then electromagnetic radiation in waves is a callback to the waves and sound that we did, only we're going to do it with light. 
electromagnetic waves. And so if you, this is where the 4B students are going to go, oh, 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 and you 4A students are going to be like, eh, it's going to be OK. 4A students, you're not going to require to know anything from 4B. Okay? We'll get you over the hump, and we'll be right into uh, optics. We'll learn how everything works, from your eyes to telescopes to your phones, cameras, everything. And then, after optics, which is the end of the third unit, we get into modern physics. So our fourth unit is relativity. That's Einstein and black holes and time travel and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then <laughs> we use the word introductory quantum mechanics, introductory as a qualifier. I got to my senior level quantum mechanics class, so the second time taking quantum mechanics, and the book's title was Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. <laughs> right? Okay? You know you're in trouble. And you get to grad school, the book is simply called Quantum Mechanics. <laughs> right? So this is introductory quantum mechanics. It's a taste. Again, some of you civil engineers, geomatics, are going to be like, why do I have to learn quantum mechanics? It's, it's, the, it's the now and it's the future. So much of our technology nowadays is based on quantum mechanics principles. Okay? You're just really learning to crack the case. And it's going to be part of your future, even in like civil engineering. right? Quantum computers are going to start rewriting how traffic flow algorithms have to work and that kind of stuff. So, so understanding, having a background in quantum mechanics is really going to, a lot of times, the students that are in 4C, they really don't have to take 4C, like our civil engineers, stuff like that. Some of them are like, oh, this is part of it. We get to this part, and they're like, oh! It's like it's finally Star Trek, right? We're talking about teleporters, we're talking about warp drives, and we're like, this is what I thought physics was going to be. All that stuff. Pop culture stuff. Well, it's all that. Right? And then we will blow up the world. Um, <laughs> down here. Um, it's easy. Jeff? <laughs> oh, you got up. <laughs> he went to go get. He went to go get it. <laughs> so yeah, that that's sort of the semester at a glance, right? Um, and the the thermodynamics unit, especially if you've had chemistry, is going to be a walk in the park. If you haven't had chemistry, it's still not going to be that bad. All right, in, in in my in my estimation. Okay, we have twenty minutes, so let's get started. Um, we got a lot to do. Okay. Um, so, I can't remember, I, do you have homework for this Saturday? Uh, I hope not. <laughs> I think my 4A students do. I don't remember. Um, chapter 15, we're probably going to take today, Wednesday, and next Monday to do. You'll have your lab on civil diagnosis next Tuesday. And then I think the exam might be the Tuesday after that. Uh, we'll look at the cal. We'll look at excuse me. We'll look at the calendar tomorrow. Okay. We'll just stay on top of this, right? Uh, 15, 16, and 17, I think, are the chapters we have to cover. My first group. Well, this is end. Days. We're on day one. I've already yeah. that. So thank you. I'll try to correct that. If I don't remember, email me or something. You might need to fix that. I just sometimes I get the wrong links in the wrong places. Okay, so uh, and we're gonna we're gonna take the next twenty minutes to get some of the some of those cobwebs out of your brain, right? Because let's face it, you probably haven't thought like a, thought like a physicist all break, right? So let, let's see here. Let's see how we do. Right? So a little bit. Oh, that was nice. Wake now, right? Okay. Uh, what's that? Spring. Mass on a spring, right? Okay. And uh, the spring stretched. Okay. We'll talk about Hooke's law here in just a bit, right? But this mass has a, a position right here, sort of kind of at rest. We're going to call that the equilibrium position, right? And uh, what we, for definition, we'll just say that's our zero position. Right? We'll reference everything from there. And if I pull this mass down, okay, let's say I pull it down, pull it down, I don't know, that far, okay, and I let go of it, what's it going to do? Well, it's going to go up. So what must, what goes up must? Hmm. 
Okay, up and down. Okay, so it goes up about that far. Okay, it's losing some of its amplitude right now. Okay. What is this motion? It's oscillating. What's that word mean? Going back and forth. Okay. Harmonic is another word for that. So oscillation and harmonic, those are sort of interchangeable. So when I say that this is simple harmonic motion, the word simple means there's no friction in it. <laughs> okay, it doesn't mean it's easy to understand. But it is easy to understand. It's bouncing up and down. It's going back and forth. It's repeating itself. This thing gets back to its original starting position, doesn't it? And then it does exactly the same motion over and over again. What's something you notice about this motion and it's say it's height maybe? It's always equal above and below. And is it a, if I bring it down 10 centimeters here, does it go more than 10 centimeters up here? It's constrained, isn't it? So maybe if we're thinking in terms of energy from physics 4A, what kind of energy are we storing when we just hold it here? It's potential energy, right? Stored in the spring. What are the four B students doing? Right? And if I let go of it, that potential energy turns into kinetic energy. Okay? That kinetic energy motion. But that kinetic energy does go to zero. Where's the other point where the kinetic energy is zero? Kinetic energy is zero here. Why? It's not moving. It's turning around right here, right? Where's the other place it turns around? Right up here, right? We call these points of maximum distance, we call that an amplitude. So there's an amplitude to this motion. We use capital A as the symbol. And that amplitude is the same above and below. Okay? All potential energy at an amplitude. This is where it's turning around. Its speed goes from, well, in this case, it was positive velocity. And then it stops, turns around, and has negative velocity up here because it's going the other way. Right? So we go from, a, from zero kinetic energy, all potential energy, to a point of, again, all potential energy, no kinetic energy. So where is the kinetic energy the largest? At equilibrium. Because it's at equilibrium where the spring is no longer pushing or pulling on anything, right? Up here, the spring's pushing down. Down here, the spring's pulling up. Okay? One other thing that makes it simple, we're kind of ignoring gravity. In the sense that, is there gravitational potential energy here? Is it changing? Sure. But it turns out that doing it this way or doing it horizontally on a frictionless surface, you end up with exactly the same math. It's just the horizontal frictionless surface is way harder to build than just hanging something off of a spring. Okay? So we kind of ignore the fact that gravity is doing anything like this. OK, so what, what, what do we know so far? <laughs> we, we, we specified several things, right? So the setup here right, is one of this spring with this mass hanging on it, okay? Wherever it rests, right, if it's not moving at all, that is called the equilibrium position. It can oscillate up and down to certain amplitudes going on here. There we go. Okay. We know a little bit about the energy. Let's talk about the force. Okay, that this spring exerts on this object. When I pull it down, there's a force in that spring. That force is given by Hooke's Law. Brownie points, everybody can remember Hooke's Law from Physics 4A. Negative KS. Ooh, negative KS. Very good. Negative KX. Okay. Now, for clarity, that negative sign is telling you about direction. You will often see in a book, you see me do it, I will write, well, the force of a spring is kx, and I'll just keep going. And you'll be like, what about the minus sign? It's like, well, it's, it's, I did the amplitude, not the vector, right? That minus sign is a reminder that if I do negative x, I pulled it down, I'm below zero, right? What direction is the force? It's up. So even though the displacement was negative, that, that stretch that I gave it was a negative x, the force's direction is up. The negative sign is a reminder that the extension, the distance from zero, 
and the force are opposite each other. So if I'm above here, I've given it positive x, which way is the screen pushing? Down, okay? So they're just always opposites of each other. In other words, a spring pushes or pulls depending on how it's stressed. So a lot of the time, you'll see this written as just equals F equals KS. It drops the vector sign. We just want to know the magnitude of the force. Okay, so we have this force, and we also know this, don't we? What's that? Yeah, what is, what is that? Newton's second law. Oh my gosh, Mr. Baylor, really? First day of class? Hooke's law, now Newton's second? Yes. Newton's second law. All right, so let's stick them together. We have the following thing. We've got mass times acceleration, and if we ignore gravity, what's the only force that's acting on this mass? The spring, okay? So we have the mass and acceleration, and the only force we've got is that, the kx. I, do, I put the minus sign in there because some people freak out if it's not there. All right. For the first time in your physics career, you're up against a kind of equation that in 4a we hid from you. In 4b we did expose you a little bit. So we're right up against it. What kind of equation is that sitting right there in the green? Don't see it? Solve for x. It's like, oh, so that's easy to figure out. It's a differential equation. It's a differential equation. But there's no derivative there, Mr. Balo. It is. Where's the derivative? The acceleration is the second derivative of position with respect to time, right? And so solving for x is not a simple case of just dividing by k, right? We have, for the first time, even we didn't even really do this in 4b, for the first time, we are changing the acceleration on you. All of the toolboxes in 4a depended on that acceleration being the same. So much so that when we change an acceleration, there's always in the context of, say, energy. And what was one of the big deals about energy? Conservation. Conservation. And it didn't care what the acceleration was, right? Acceleration can do whatever it wants, as long as I know beginning and end, right? I'm good, and it ignored that. And that's, what, that's how we kind of swept anything that had a changing acceleration under the rug, right? We didn't even know it. We just, we just did it, and you, 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 you trusted me, right? Okay, and then we forced it. In kinematics, what happens if the acceleration changes, that, that car rolling off the cliff? What do you have to do when you have a change in acceleration? You gotta do two problems, don't you? You gotta do one acceleration that's constant, always a lie. Cars don't accelerate constantly, all right? Okay. And then, but when you have free fall, that is a constant acceleration. The one time acceleration is almost always the same, unless you have air resistance. Okay. Right? But this one right out of the gate has a constantly changing acceleration. What's the acceleration up here? What's the acceleration at the middle? Where is the speed changing the most? At the top and bottom. How is it changing the most right there? It's like it's zero. It's going, it's going from a, say, positive direction to a negative direction. That's a big change in velocity. Where is the acceleration? Zero. Well, if it's max at the end, <laughs> it's got to be zero in the middle. Yes, you're starting to see the pattern. Another way to think about it is where is the spring pulling or pushing on it the most? At the end. Where is the spring relaxed? At the equilibrium, at the center. 
So if the force on, from the spring is zero at the center, that means the acceleration is zero. But it's zero at the center, and it's maximum at the end, and it's who knows what in between. This is a constantly changing acceleration. And simple harmonic motion, its toolbox unlocks your superpower. It's like a level up bonus in your skill tree. I can now do changing acceleration. And we're going to do it without, well, we can do it depending on the calculus. You are not required to know how to solve differential equations in this, okay? So we tend to just give you the solution. But I do want to give you some context for mass, was it ma no, Zippy Q's is mass 7? 17? This is a good class. I liked math with math. I endured differential equations. And I might maybe had it. It was my favorite of all my math classes. I'll put you that way. Okay? Because I finally, finally, there was a subject that matched my skill. I guess. I just guess all the time. What's the answer to that? I don't know. I think it's this. And then I try that answer. And when it doesn't work, I usually figure out from that guess where it went wrong. And I can redo my guess and refine it called the scientific method, okay? We use a fancy word, I have a hypothesis. You guess it, okay, right? You guess it, you didn't get your best guess, but still guess. How do you solve differential equations? Those of you taking math 17? Characteristic. No, you guess. They talk about the characteristic equation, and the right? That's when you're on the But whether you're doing it using the integral method or whatever, all of those methods are, this is how you guess. We need to guess an equation, a formula, a function that repeats itself over and over again. And our guess, whatever that function of x is, x has to be a function of time, because the derivative has time in it, okay? So my function has to be position as a function of time, and whatever that function is, not only does it need to repeat itself over and over again to be able to describe this motion, but when I take its second derivative, I have to get exactly the same thing back out again. I have a second derivative of x, and I have the x. What's a function in math that repeats itself with this? I, it's, a, it's even has a negative sign. It's like a dead giveaway. What's a function when you take its second derivative, you get the negative of the function? Sine or cosine, right? That's it. It's a sine or a cosine. Does e to the x work? No. Uh, it doesn't work as a minus sign, right? Okay. But you do get the same function out. But does this motion look like e to the x to you? No. no. So e to the x is a bad guess. Now, e, e to the x tends to be like if you have no idea what you're doing in differential equations, like day zero, you walk into ZQ's class, pick E to the X. Right? You're going to be right 50% of the time. Okay? Right? So, especially as a first order differential equation. Anyway, so this has to be some sort of sine or cosine function, doesn't it? I mean, is this what sine or cosine does? If I took this thing bouncing up and down and then drug it sideways across the board, what would the path look like? It would look like a sine or a cosine function. So this is where we're letting the universe tell us what the math needs to look like. The math is communicating it too, but we can use the physical universe to say, look, I need something that bounces. And stuff that bounces, well, those are sines and cosines. And so this is what the function looks like. It looks like the amplitude, and it can be cosine or sine of omega t plus yeah, uh, correction factor. This is, this is where sine and cosine end up not mattering. It matters in a, in a sense, and I'll, I'll steer you through that in a bit. Okay? But that function, when we take its second derivative, will end up as a negative cosine with some junk along for the ride. Okay? <coughs> Tomorrow you're going to be doing this in lab <laughs> um, as a little, little preview. Okay? That A is the amplitude. That omega, this is 
way to them. You remember Omega? No? Yeah? Angular velocity. Thank you very much for using the V word. Okay? Because we very carefully taught you that it was an angular velocity. How fast something went around in, say, radians per second or revolutions per minute or something like that. As you are going to discover throughout this semester, that was one of the many lies that we told you. It's a good lie. It's a good lie to use for the little, the little cute 4 a student, right? Okay, they're so innocent, right? And they're just drowning, and you've got to throw them a bone. You throw them bones like, what's the velocity? It's not. It's an angular frequency. What's frequency? Frequency is the number of times this thing bounces up and down per second. It's a cycle per second. The unit of cycles, because cycle isn't a unit, it's like radians, okay? But a cycle per second really has units of just inverse seconds. And the units of omega are a radian per second. And again, a radian doesn't have any units, right? The inverse second is called a hertz, H-E-R-T-Z. You've heard of hertz before, not the rental car company. You've probably heard of it in, um, in connection with computers. So if a processor operates at 4.9 gigahertz, it's how many? It's 4.9 giga. What's a giga? Billion with a B. Go memorize those. A lot of you are asking me questions about them during the test. What's a mega? I, I, I'll tell you. But just memory, like the, just the easy ones. Kilo, what's that? Uh, mega. Giga. Okay, go the other way. Milli. Thousand. What's the million? Micro. And then what's the billion? Nano. So if you know nano, micro, milli, kilo, mega, giga, 98% of the time you don't need to ask me a question. When you get to quantum mechanics, it's going to be nano, it's going to be kilo. Okay? <laughs> or sometimes terahertz. Trillions sure of hertz, right? But a processor at 4.9 gigahertz is 4.9 billion what? Cycles, something per second. And in the case of computers, it's a compute cycle. That used to be one operation. So operations per second, which is called the op number now. But now, because uh, processors run in parallel and have lots of cores in them and stuff like that, it's a computation, it's a clock cycle of the motherboard. And it can have many, many calculations for that one cycle, okay? So you can measure operations per second, you can measure in clock speed, that's what they're talking about. But it's a, it's a number of, comp so, so, so if your computer runs at 4.9 gigahertz, it's doing 4.9 billion computational cycles every second to bring you Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> All right. We will pick up with this bouncy, bouncy object on Wednesday. And I will give you the full, we'll develop together and give you the full toolbox for simple harmonic motion, and then we'll start applying it. Tomorrow, come to the lab you're trying to get into, which I think is the eight o'clock lab for everybody, right? Um, and uh, get ready to review some math. See you then.